Jesus. All right, we're going to call up the ushers for this morning's tithes and offerings. Um, Lord Jesus, uh, thank you for this morning. Just thank you that we get to lift your name on high. And uh, God, I just pray this morning as we come before your cross, I pray that we can just leave our burdens there and just that you can meet us there and you can change our hearts. And just thank you for all that you want to do in each one of our hearts this morning. Thank you for the gifts and uh, for the giver in your name. Amen. Amen. Savior, I come and quiet my soul. Remember, Redemption's Hill. Where your blood was spilled for my ransom, everything I once held dear, I counted all as loss. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord. I lay me. Of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross. You were as I. Tempted and tried, human. The Word became flesh for my sin and death. Now you're risen. Everything I once held dear, I counted all as lost. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me. Yeah, lead me to the cross. for your cross, Lord. Thank you that because of your cross, we can come to you. Mm -hmm. 
Lord Jesus, what a sweet, what a sweet gift that is, that we can have fellowship with you. God, this morning as we dig into your word, Holy Spirit, would you open our eyes to see what you have for us? To hear the words that you've put on on Dave's lips. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray that our each of our heart attitude would be one of, of surrender this morning. As we hear, as we hear your Holy Spirit speak to us. Thank you, Jesus. You guys can have a seat. I got so carried away with praise and worship, I missed the signal. <laughs> Did you hear the story of the uh, two guys who came out from the States? And they came to uh, Manitoba. I think they were Eric's buddies, actually. They were coming ice fishing. And so... Uh, uh, they were going to come ice fishing in Manitoba, and so they came up to the uh, Lake Manitoba there. And the first thing they did just before they got there, they stopped at the store, and they, they bought themselves they bought themselves each an ice pick. <laughs> and so they, were, they went and they bought this ice pick, and they left. They went to the lake, an hour later they come back to the store, and now they each ordered two ice picks. And they're gone for a couple hours, and they come back, and they come back to the store, and they say to the store owner, we want all the ice picks that you have. And he said... Like, don't you, don't, like, haven't you made your hole yet? He said, we don't even have the boat in the water yet. <laughs> Eric, or was that you, Eric? <laughs> I know Eric likes ice fishing. Isn't it amazing how sometimes, uh, uh, you know what, we, we get so off track and we don't really know what it is and how to do things. As we're talking about prayer this morning... I think that's how we sometimes are in prayer. We really don't know what to do or how to get there. And I thought it, it wasn't really fair to, to uh, uh, end off a teaching on prayer without teaching uh, on a prayer that we find in Scripture that I think if you say that prayer every morning, it'll absolutely change your life. I think that you'll find that if you say that prayer uh, you'll have to be careful because God will do more stuff than you could ask or imagine. Now, maybe some of you say, well, I don't want to pray that kind of a prayer. But it's a prayer that I ran across about uh, 14 years ago. And uh, I actually taught on it about 14 years ago here in the church. I think I did a series on it actually at that time. But I want to just spend uh, a one Sunday morning looking at it and and it's called, it's referred to as the prayer of Jabez. How many of you know about the prayer of Jabez? How many of you pray that every morning? We should. You should actually pin it up. You should put it on your mirror. And you should pray that prayer. I will warn you, if you talk to Kathy, she will tell you that if you pray that prayer, be careful because God will do incredible things in your life. He will do incredible things in the life of, of, of people around you. And uh, he will do incredible things in this church. Do you know that before we started praying that prayer of Jabez, we did not have a, 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 a preschool in this church here or, uh, or a daycare. Those came after we started praying that prayer. And uh, um, it's a prayer that I believe God answers. Because God wants to do incredible things in your and my life. 
And so I want us to look at it this morning. You can find it in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. It's on page 588 of your Bibles, only if you have the same Bible as me, of course. But I'll let you get there. Uh, I'll let you get the boat in the water before we start fishing. <laughs> uh, 1 Chronicles 4, verse 9 to 10. Now, I'm sure most of you read 1 Chronicles, the first nine chapters every month, don't you? I tell you, the first nine chapters of, of, of 1 Chronicles are so incredibly boring, it's not funny. Because it's genealogies. It's so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so. And by the time you get to end of chapter 1, if you're reading it to someone else, they're sleeping. You get halfway through chapter 2 and you're sleeping. And a lot of people who read through the Bible actually skip over all these genealogies. And In fact, I will admit I'm one of those who is guilty of that. Okay, sometimes when I get to these genealogies where it says so-and-so begat, so-and-so begat, so-and-so, I do what we call speed reading. I go... It's amazing how many chapters you can cover in one day when you're reading all the genealogies. But it's interesting, when you get in the middle of those genealogies, all of a sudden there's something to just wake you up. Something that draws your attention, and you wonder how through, through nine chapters of genealogies, all of a sudden in the middle of that, we have something that is, that, that, where the writer stops and takes note, that there's something important here to watch out for. And so I want to read it actually in two translations. I'll read it in the New International Version, and then I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. It says in the New Version, New International Version. Okay, I'm going to slow down my speaking and get my words out clearly. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. <laughs> that doesn't tell us much because his brothers could have been scoundrels. He could have been a criminal himself. Who knows? But it says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother has, ha, had named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. I think that's what every woman says. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. The New King James Version has it just a little bit different. It says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother, call, his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Jabez is called someone who is honorable, more honorable than his brothers. And I think the reason that it says that, because I believe as I read this, there's something that stood out about Jabez, and that was that Jabez was a man of prayer. I'm thinking he must have been an incredible man of prayer in order for him to be listed in his genealogy, and it stops and it talks about him. And it, just, it doesn't just say that he was a man of prayer. It actually tells us word for word what he prayed. And when I look at that, I'm thinking, there must be something very important to this prayer that Jabez is praying that we actually have the words that he prayed. Jabez was a man who we could say, grew up with strikes already against them. Can you imagine being in grade one? Hey, Payne, can you come up here? Because that's what his name means. <laughs> it can be translated actually as pain or misery. <laughs> oh, here comes misery. Oh, yes. Quite the reputation he must have had. I hope none of us have that as a nickname. Oh, here comes Payne. What's his last name? We won't tell you. But 
I can imagine what his life must have been life. Anybody remember the Johnny Cash song? Call me anything but Sue. And I was thinking, that's probably, that's probably how Jabez is thinking. Call me anything but pain. Call me anything but misery. So wherever he goes, that is how he is known. He is known. His name is pain. His name is misery. He prayed a prayer that got God's attention. He prayed a prayer that hit the mark so much that God, it says that God granted his request. And it doesn't say that Jabez prayed a good prayer. It simply quotes it. There's four key points to the prayer of Jabez I want us to look at this morning. The first one is, oh, that you would bless me indeed. I know some people have a hard time praying, oh, Lord, that you would bless me indeed. Somehow in our uh, uh, Christian environment, there has come this teaching that says that, that God doesn't really want to bless you because what happens is they take this, uh, uh, this prosperity gospel and, and they mix it in there. And as soon as you talk about blessing, they say, oh, you're talking about a prosperity gospel. And it's not true. And it's not valid. I want you to know today that God really wants to bless you. Jabez prayed, oh, that you would bless me indeed. I think the question we need to ask ourselves this morning is, what is a blessing? A blessing is a specific gift from God for a specific time and a specific purpose to bring increase into our life. Do you know that it's God's nature to bless people? It's something that she really wants to do. God is a God of blessing. And so, when Jabez prays a prayer and asks God to bless him, he is praying something that God wants to do in his life. We find in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, we find the story of Abram. And this is what God says to Abram. He says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. That's Genesis 12, verse 2 and 3. I will make your name great and... You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God wants to bless you and me so that you and I can be a blessing to the world around us. God wants to bless us not so that we can hoard things to ourselves and so that, so that we can have everything to ourselves. In fact, I would suggest that if that's the kind of life you, you live, God will not bless that because that's not what God blesses. But God wants to bless you and me so that you and I can be a blessing to others. He wants us to be someone who, who, who at all times can bless other people around us. And so Abram was blessed not only for his sake, but for the sake of others. I find in Genesis chapter 32, verse 26, Genesis 32, verse 26, we have the song of Jacob, and the story of Jacob, and we find Jacob in that passage. Jacob was wrestling with God. And he's wrestling with God, he's wrestling with this man, he's wrestling with this angel. And, and, and Jacob is, is not willing to let go. And it says in Genesis 32, verse 26, and he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. This is when his name was changed to Israel. But he realized the, the incredible importance and he realized the value of a blessing. And so Jacob, as he was wrestling with God, he would not let go until he was actually blessed. I hope that's the place that you and I are in our lives in our relationship with God, that we will not leave God's presence until we know that we are blessed. 
In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. In other words, God is a God of blessing. And once we can wrap our, 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 our minds around that, guess what? Then we no longer feel guilty about saying, God, I ask you to bless me. I want you to know that it's something that Kathy and I pray on a regular basis. We pray that God will bless us incredibly so that we can be a blessing to others. Do you know that that's why you exist? Do you know that that's why God created you? God wants to have this intimate relationship with you, and he wants to be able to bless you, and he wants you in such a relationship with him, so when he has blessed you, he can say to you, I want you to take what I've blessed you with, and I want you to bless so-and-so over there, or I want you to bless so-and-so over there. I want you to do this. And I want you to know something. There is no greater joy in being able to bless others. If you want real joy, start blessing other people. Guess what? People who hoard to themselves are actually very unhappy people. You want to find someone who's happy, you find someone who, who's out there going and blessing people. In fact, they tell you that, that if someone is really depressed and going through a difficult time in life, just really is down in the dumps, you know what the best thing to do is? Go work at the food bank. Go work at self-help. Go to Union Gospel Mission. Go and, and begin to, to do those things. I read a story several years ago about this lady at Christmas time. She had, she had gone through a difficult time. She had gone through a divorce. And, and she, was, she was just having a hard time making things meet. And she was just on this, on this road of, of, of depression. And it was a road of, of woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. And she had a, a, a new coat. That's the one thing she had. And she sensed God telling her to take her new coat, the one thing that she really had, and to give it away. And so she found someone on the street who was homeless. And she gave that coat away. And she took her kids and she went, she went to the, the Christmas hamper place. She said, can we help you to just wrap up Christmas presents? And can we help deliver them? And she said, that was the greatest Christmas of my life. But it happened... And blessing. Blessing is spiritual prosperity. God desires for you and I to have a heart of blessing. And so Jabez prayed, bless me indeed. Or in other words, Bless me a lot. When you say, bless me indeed, it, what he's really saying is, Lord God, I want, to want you to bless me lots and lots and lots. That's really what it means when he says, bless me indeed. He didn't want God to just give him a little bit of blessing. He wanted God to give him hordes and hordes of blessings so that he can be a blessing to others. The second part of the prayer, he says, enlarge my territory. When I look at enlarge this, my territory, I'm thinking what he's saying is, Lord, take the limitations off of my life. In other words, he's saying, Lord, I'm tired of limiting what you can do through me. Because did you know that the only thing that limits what God can do through us is you and me? Do you know that God wants to do such incredible stuff through you, it's not even funny? Do you know that he wants to use you every day to speak life to people? Do you know that he actually wants to use you to bring people into a personal relationship with him? Do you know that he wants to use you that when people see you, they think, there goes Jesus. And he wants to bless you in such a way that you can be a blessing to others. And so he wants to bless you with joy and peace. Do you know what? It's hard to be a blessing to somebody else if you don't have any joy or peace in your life. <laughs> it's hard to be a blessing. You know what? This is hard to be a blessing. Well, how's it going? Well, it just sucks. Well, it must be something good in your life. I don't know what. I'm wondering if I stopped for 30 seconds this morning, 
Can anybody tell me how they were blessed this week? You have water again. In the well or on your, on your grass? Everywhere. Ah. So you didn't have to shower outside yesterday when it was raining? <laughs> you know, I, I, I was blessed so incredibly this week. In fact, God had his hand of protection on, on, on Kevin and me. In our place, we sometimes do not such smartest things. We steal from each other. And so we all have hitches on our vehicles, okay? But sometimes uh, a guy takes a hitch out and he's missing the pin, and so he just takes it from someone else's vehicle. And I think that's what happened in my truck. Because what happened is I went to Alberta, and, I, I, and when I got to Alberta, I hooked onto this trailer, and I didn't think of nothing because my hitch is in there. And I hook onto my trailer, and I drive from Alberta all the way home with this trailer. And I hook the trailer in the evening, and next morning I drive to town and back, and I've had put something in the back of my truck, and I opened my end gate. When I opened my end gate on my truck, I heard this clunk on the floor, and I looked, and there was my hitch. And I'm thinking, how in the world did I make it from Alberta (laughs) to Manitoba on that hitch without that pin in there? You know how? I have a God of blessing. I have a God who watches out for me. And he just showed me my stupidity when I got home. And I said, oh, thank you, God. You're so awesome. Can you imagine the wreck that would have been? The tears we would have shed? (laughs) Maybe the blame we would have cast? (laughs) The work you would have got? (laughs) <laughs> oh yes you know we serve, we serve an incredible God I'm going to share a little bit I, I, I don't like to get too personal sometimes because then people sometimes yeah whatever anyway Kevin and me had the privilege of going and learning how to fly an ultralight this week and so we picked one up over there and we were bringing it back and we are just wondering, where, where are we going to fly that thing? And so, you know what? Kevin got a call, phone call from Kendall, and so Kevin followed up this phone call yesterday. And we were thinking we'd have to pick out a bunch of trees at our place and a bunch of stuff. I was going to fly it out of my yard. <laughs> we'll teach Kathy to pray again. <laughs> anyway, you know what God did? He blessed us with an airstrip that we can use and a hangar where we can store that thing. And all we have to do is cut the grass. You want to know a God who blesses? We have a God who blesses incredibly. You know what? God wants to bless us. He's a God who wants to bless us. He wants to just pour out upon us. So anyway, I just want you to know that that God blesses us incredibly. I think so often in life what happens is that you and I limit God. When he says, enlarge my territory... What he's talking about is he's talking about his sphere of influence. What Jabez really wants is he wants his sphere of influence to be enlarged. He doesn't just want to impact his, his, I don't know if he had a wife or son or whatever, but he doesn't just want to influence those really close around him. He wants to influence the world around him. It's sort of like this man, he was, he went, to, this king was watching this man, and this, this man had gone around and he had, uh, he was doing great things, and the, the, he was, the king was getting all kinds of reports of this incredible man who just was doing great things and blessing people and doing all kinds of stuff. So the king called this man over, and he said, you know what, I want to bless you today. And so what I want you to do is you can take this marker, and you can go around, and you can, you can mark with this marker. And he said, wherever you mark, okay, wherever you mark, wherever you can walk throughout the day, whatever area you can mark, he said, I'm going to give you that whole area. And so this guy was thinking big. He wanted, he wanted, just like Jabez, he wanted his territory to be increased. So guess how far he went that day? Guess how many miles he put on? None. He stood in that spot, 
And he took that marker and he made a circle like this around himself. And the king said to him, is that all the land you want? He said, I want everything outside that circle. And that was how Jabez thought. God, I, I don't want just this little thing. I want you to expand my territory. And when he was talking about expanding his territory, I think in my heart what Jabez really wanted is he wanted to have an influence so when he went places, he could lead people to the Lord because people would ask him, what's happened in your life? What's God doing in your life? Where, where are you? And wherever he would go, he would tell of the incredible blessings of God and how God was changing lives and doing stuff. And as he was doing that, his territory would expand. Sometimes we're willing to have such a, a sucky small territory where we have influence. And we need to pray that God would expand our influence. That is our, my prayer for this church. My prayer for this church is that God would just increase our territory, that we would have a positive influence, and that people would come to experience Christ because of this church, that he would increase our territory, that it wouldn't just be within two miles of Grunthal, but that it would be a large area, that people would see the blessings of God. In Joshua chapter 17, verse 14 to 18, it says, Then the children of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given us only one lot and one share to inherit, since we are a great people, inasmuch as the Lord has blessed us until now? So Joshua answered them, If you are a great people, then go up to the forest country and clear a place for yourself there in the land of the per Perizzites and the giants, since the mountains of Ephraim are too confined for you. But the children of Joseph said, The mountain country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both those who are of Beth Shane and, and its towns and those who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, saying, You are a great people and of great power. You shall not have only one lot, but the mountain country shall be yours. Although it is wooded, you shall cut it down, and its farthest extent shall be yours. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots and are strong. In other words, these people weren't satisfied with just a little lot. They wanted more. And that's the kind of mentality that I think we need to have in our lives. We need to have a mentality that says, God, we want more territory for you. We want to reach a greater place for you. That means getting out of our comfort zone. And it means entering into an incredible land of blessing. Because I believe that God wants to bless us as a church and each one of us as individuals. And he wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing to others. Then the third thing he prays is that the time will stand still. No. <laughs> that your hand would be with me. Do you know that when the hand of God is with you, it should be apparent to everybody. There shouldn't be a doubt in the world that, guess what, that person is really blessed of God. But there's something that happens when the hand of God is with you. God actually wants to put his hand on us. He wants to bless us. And he wants to hold our hand, and he wants to lead us and direct us and guide us. The Hebrew word that is used here is one for an open hand. And how awesome it is to know that God is there with an open hand to take ours and lift us up when we are down and encourage us when we are weak. This word indicates power and it means direction. In other words, when he said that his hand would be with him, it was that he would, he would sense what God wanted, that he would have God's direction. He wanted to know that God was the one who was leading and guiding him, that he wasn't out in left field someplace. He wanted to be walking hand in hand with God. He wanted a partnership. 
says in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, it says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been, until you have been clothed with power from on high. That's really what it is to have God's hand upon us. Then it says in Acts 1, verse 8, But you will receive power in my, when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Then it says in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. I believe that when you and I pray the prayer of Jabez, you know what, we are so much further ahead than Jabez was. In Jabez's time, there was no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, the Holy Spirit came upon people for a specific purpose and at a specific time, but he didn't have the Holy Spirit that was there in you at all times. And so we are so much more blessed than Jabez. And so I would encourage you as, as you pray this prayer, pray that he would just saturate you with his Holy Spirit. Or rather, we should pray that we would allow his Holy Spirit to saturate us because he's already done his part. It's us who's holding back anything that God wants to do because God wants to fill us with him so incredibly that we know his will in every situation, that we live a life that's pleasing to him. It says in Philippians 4, verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Really what you and I need is we need more power to be a blessing. We need more power to, to be a witness. That's really what we need. It says in Psalm 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Then 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. You know what he's talking about here? He's talking about you and I are going to have grace. You know what grace does? Grace overlooks when someone offends you. Grace overlooks when someone does you wrong. Grace overlooks when you've been cheated. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. That's really how people will see Christ in us. That guess what? If someone really hoops you one, you still turn around and bless them. You know what it talks about? It talks about it in the Old Testament. It talks about heaping coals of fire on somebody's head. And what that really does was, did was, in those days, they didn't have, oh, I don't have it on me. They didn't have these big lighters. And so what would happen is, uh, if your fire went out, okay, if your fire went out that you needed for cooking and for all that kind of stuff, you were really hooped. You had to either take a flint and you had to bang it like crazy and get a fire going, or you had to rub sticks together. And if you all of a sudden notice that your neighbor's fire would go out and your neighbor had really ticked you off, maybe he had, maybe he had uh, uh, taken something that was, was yours. Maybe he had badmouthed you. Something. But they had done something that wasn't pleasant to you. And you saw that their fire had gone out. You would actually take from your place and you would take a bunch of hot coals and you would go over to the neighbor and you would bring the hot coals over there, there and you would help to start their fire. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about him giving us grace, grace that is greater than anything else, grace that overlooks differences. It says in Psalm 37, verse 23 to 25, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. 
I have been young and now and now I'm old, yet have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. In other words, God loves looking after us. He delights in it. Fourthly, it says, you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. That's the King, New King James Version. I really like that version. Do you know that sin doesn't just affect us, it affects those around us. Jabez had grown up with the title of someone who causes pain. Because when he had come into this world, I don't know what happened, we're not told the whole story, we just know that he caused pain to his mom. But Jabez knew that God could set him free from that label. He knew that God was able to do a miracle in his life. He knew that God could use him for good things and not for evil. It says in Romans 12, verse 9, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. And that's what Jabez's prayer was. That God would keep him from evil. And that he would not cause pain. Or that he would not experience pain. And experiencing pain, I believe with the heart that Jabez had, if he saw his neighbor who was offended, he would experience pain from it. That if he felt that he had wronged anyone, he would feel pain because he really had the heart of God and his desire was simply to be a blessing. Jabez wasn't a great prophet or preacher. He was not the wise ruler over a great nation. He was not famous on a battlefield. He was remembered because of his prayer. He prayed a prayer that got God's attention. You know what it says in James chapter 4? It says, you have, we have not because we ask not. I want to challenge us to pray that God would bless us in every area of our life, that we could be a blessing to others. And start just blessing people. Bless them with your words. Speak life wherever you go. Speak life of people. If you're able to stop and give someone a hand, stop and give them a hand. Oh, that reminds me of my announcement, one of my announcements. <laughs> Hannah Wheeler texted me this morning and said uh, they're having an auction June 20th. And they could really use some help. They, actually, the term was a lot of help to get ready for the auction. And so in the next two weeks, if you have time, you can just go down there or I'll give you actually their phone number when I do the announcements later. And you can just go give them a hand. And that would be being a blessing. I don't think they'll need any ice picks but they could use a hand. You and I need to pray that God would take us out of our comfort zone. That he would expand our territory. That's a really tough prayer to pray. It really is. I think one of the people that I knew who mastered that the best was a pastor by the name of Glenn Forsberg. Glenn Forsberg is a man that, that I highly respect, and if he would go into a restaurant and he would see a table of, of, of six guys there and there was room for eight, guess where he would go sit? At a table where there was only one person who was all alone. And he would go sit there and he would introduce himself and he would ask if he could pray for him for anything. Glenn just has this way. He can just go anywhere. <laughs> for me, that's a little harder. And for you, say amen. It's a little harder, isn't it? But guess what? When you and I step out, God is not going to drop you like a hot potato. God's going <laughs> to give you words to speak. Sometimes Kathy says to me, man, 
I don't, I don't know why, I don't know where all that came from. She said, I meet this person and, and she's not someone who talks easy that way she thinks. And uh, she just talks and talks and talks. And it's amazing how God will just give you words to speak. We should ask him to keep us free from sin. The last part of that verse, I love it. It says this. And God granted his request. That tells us that God really heard his heart and that his prayer, his request, was the heart of God. In fact, guess what? It's what God had put into his heart. And Jabez came to the place where he realized that God put this into his heart. And so he prayed it boldly. Lord God, bless me indeed. Expand my territory. Because that's what God wants for every one of us. Because his territory will only expand as you and I are witnesses for him. Jabez's heart longed for nothing greater than to find favor in God's eyes by his faithful use of God's blessings. He simply desired more to do with so that he could be found faithful and honorable with what he did with it. It's no secret that God's called each one of us to be ministers of his grace and goodness. In fact, Paul describes us as a clay, as clay pots filled with the treasure of God. And Peter calls us a royal priesthood. And God says we are to proclaim his praises. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Can you imagine? How many things that we have not fulfilled? I'm going to close with this story. I hope I can remember it properly. A man died and went to heaven. As he got to heaven, he was going around with St. Peter, and as he's going around, then he he sees all these rooms and all these things. He said, wow, what's in all those rooms? And he saw one door that that they walked by, and he said, how come we didn't go in that door? And St. Peter said, no, you you, you, you just don't want to go there. And he took him through a tour of heaven. It was this incredible place. And as they go by this door again, he said, what's in that door? He said, I really want to know. And so St. Peter said, well, if you really want to know, I'll I'll open it. And as he opened this door, there's all these boxes. And there's these these white boxes with with silver ribbons around them. And he said, wow, presents. This is my name in there. His name was Joel. He said, yes, yours is. And so he looked into the chairs and he found Joel. And he opened it up. And as he opened up that box, he took that ribbon up, and he's all expecting, what in the world is in this box for me? What has God got for me? And as he opened the box, he found inside it was written, all the blessings that God had for him. But he had never gotten because he had never used what he had and never asked God to use him. I wonder how much we miss out but just not allowing God to use us. We have several parables in Scripture. In those parables, we have the parable of the ten talents where one got five, one got ten, and one got five, and one got one. And I can't explain it all today, but we'll go there someday. But you know what happened? The guy who had one talent, you know what he did? He buried it in the ground. He made sure that when God came back, he would have that one talent. 
And the guy who had five, he went and increased and got five more. The guy who had ten went and increased and got ten more. Guess what? God wants you to increase. And it says that when God came back and he, and he, 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 he found the guys and he said, what did you do with what I gave you? The guy who had one talent brought it up and he was all excited. Guess what? I kept that one talent that you gave me. And God says, you wicked servant. Why didn't you at least invest it? God wants you and me to invest. He wants us to invest in people. And do you know that I believe that when you and I are faithful, God will bless our socks off, not so we can buy a Porsche or, 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 or some of that stuff, but he wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing to others. Kathy and me sit sometimes and talk of God's incredible blessing. God has blessed Kathy and me beyond our wildest dreams. But I want to tell you something. I'm going to get very, I'm going to get very personal. Kathy and me pray that God will bless us so we can seed into the ministry. That's our prayer. Oh, Lord God, bless us that we can seed into the ministry. That's our desire. And do you know what? God wants to bless you. He wants you to, he wants you to prosper. He wants you to prosper so that you can seed into the ministry. We serve a God who is bigger than you can imagine. And so often we settle. We settle. I want you to know that God wants to use you to bless others. And until you use what God has given you to bless others, you will miss out on so much that God has for you of life, of joy, of hope, of peace. If you begin to use the blessings that God's used you, someday you'll go into heaven. And God will say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. God wants us to be incredible stewards. You know what a steward is? Someone who uses, who looks after something that someone else has. And God wants to bless you with his blessings so that you can bless others. Why don't you stand with me? We're going to end off with a time of praise and worship. I want to just pray a prayer before we open up the altars this morning. The prayer team is going to come, but I want to just pray a prayer over us. Lord God, I pray you would make us a people of blessing. Lord, so often when we think of blessing, we think just of finances. But Lord God, I pray that we would bless others not only in finances, but I pray we would be blessers in the words we speak. Lord God, I pray we would be, be a blessing by by cutting our neighbor's lawn and just by, by offering to babysit for our neighbor and just by offering to do good things for others. Lord God, help us just to really exemplify you, Lord God. Lord, I pray you would fill us with an extra portion of your Holy Spirit. And Lord God, this morning we open ourselves up to allow you to pour into areas of our lives that we've kept closed. Lord God, I pray you would open our eyes to see where we can be a blessing for you, Lord God. So use us. Expand our territory, Lord God. Lord, I pray for this church. Lord God, I pray that this church would be a church that, that would really expand and reach out and that people, that we'd be a blessing to this community. Lord, I thank you for the daycare and the preschool that really bless this community. Lord God, I pray for every child that comes into this place and goes through there. I pray that every one of them would get to know you as personal Lord and Savior, Lord. Lord, I pray that their homes, their families would be impacted. I pray that every home that those children come from, that they would get to know you, Lord God. So Lord, I pray you would pour out. I pray as people meet us, that we would have joy and peace. And Lord God, that we would pass that out and bless people with joy and peace in life, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to open the altar this morning. If you have a need, I encourage you to come. Because I believe that God answers prayer. So just come as we sing.
Before we get into this this next song, um, this week I heard a song um, that I hadn't heard for a really long time, um, and it's it's a story song, and it's a song about this guy that dreamed that he went to heaven, um, and his friend was there with him, and 
and it was it was a a meeting of sorts and so this they they were walking the streets of gold and they ran into this this one person this first guy and he said hey do you remember that time that you were a Sunday school teacher um one of the times that you prayed with us I gave my life to Jesus and that's why I'm here and another they they keep walking and they meet another person and they and they said hey do you remember that time that a missionary came to your church and um and you were so moved by what the missionary said that you, that you gave to the missionary. You didn't have much, but you gave it anyway. Um, I'm here because you gave. Guys, we are blessed so that we can be a blessing. Um, and that song, Here's My Heart, Here's My Life, it's a, it's a cry, it's a prayer. Here's my life, Lord. Use me, speak what is true. Use me to, to help others, to speak life into others. Um, and and it, if, you're, if you're in a place where you're like, I don't, I don't have anything, I, I can't do anything, I don't know what I would do, um, guys, know that, that the God that we serve is stronger than our limitations. He is stronger than the things that hold us back. He's stronger than our fears. He's stronger than our inhibitions. Um, And he broke sin. And as we sing this next song, it's called Stronger. We get to the chorus. I I just want you guys to sing out. Just sing at the top of your lungs. It doesn't matter if you can't hit the note. It doesn't matter if... it, It doesn't matter because you're not singing for the person next to you. You're singing for God. So I challenge you to sing louder than us. There is love that came for us, humble to the sinner's cross. You broke my shame and sinfulness rose again victorious faithfulness none can deny through the storms through the fire there is truth that sets me free Jesus Christ, who lives in me. Here we go, let's sing. You are stronger, you are stronger. Sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen. Jesus, you are Lord of all. beginning and no end you're my hope and my defense you came to seek and save the lost paid it all upon the cross you are stronger you are stronger sin is broken you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. Let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. Let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. 
let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ has risen, Jesus you are Lord of all, you are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all. Jesus, you are Lord of all. Jesus, you are Lord of
Christ alone.